This is the worst. <laughs> Boy, has it been a bad year for Hollywood. The top seven Hollywood disasters of 2023 prove once and for all that get woke, go broke is now a universal law. But we've had a lot of fun calling out all the diversity checklists, the quota queens, the cringe scripts, and the crocodile tears, which I got to tell you are about as common as plot holes and miserable millionaires moaning about money. I'm just tired of working so hard being gracious at what I do, getting paid a fraction of the cost. I'm tired of hearing my sister say the same thing over and over. What? In just 365 days, Hollywood repackaged racism as art. Disney lied, the Marvel's universe died, James Bond was censored, Lizzo promoted heart attacks, the Megans bombed, Robin Hood got a facelift, and Rachel Ziegler, she poisoned Snow White. Tinseltown took itself way too seriously last year. It's like a, you know, people say, oh, the difficulty of making a movie. If I'm going to stand there 18 hours in a dress of an iconic Disney princess, I deserve to be paid for every hour that it is streamed online. It's just a movie. It's like relax. I don't play that precious nonsense. Oh, we're moving on. Get out of here. Making a movie is, is a luxury. It's a gift. Hollywood used to make money entertaining us. Now Hollywood's losing money hating us. They started it, but we're going to finish it. Coming in at number seven, Robin Hood. What does hip hop music and Robin Hood have in common? Absolutely nothing. Welcome to the Hollywood Freak Show, where creativity is dead and storytelling is now left to artificial intelligence and woke is the new gospel of the hour. But first things first. Forget the legendary English outlaw that you remembered from your childhood. He's gone. Been erased. There's not even a shadow of him that remains. He's now been replaced by an independent bisexual black woman called Robin. But not Robin with an I. Robin with a Y. And that's because proper spelling is only for bigots. You see, in 2023, the Hollywood machine couldn't allow a white male hero to steal from the rich and give to the poor unless you lived in California. We can't get health insurance, fire insurance, life insurance. Why haven't you come out for Senate Bill 2720? Well, because you, you haven't really contributed any money to my campaign, have you? Robin, with a Y, leads an anti-authority hip-hop band called The Hood against property developer John Prince. And for Sherwood Forest, well, you replace that with a concrete jungle of low-rent government housing, bad music, a lot of drugs, identity politics, and a whole host of cringe scenes between a mother and a daughter. I heard you come in late last night. Fill up the condom jar if you need a re-up. I crashed at Allen. Make that face all you want, as long as you don't catch something. The showrunner, Director X, had a vision for the series, and it's basically a how-to manual to screw society and steal from actual poor people. If you know how the system works, we give you a, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, a few of those nods, because um, the system's, and I'm waiting for an entire societal collapse, but that's another story. <laughs> I'd say that Director X is about as suited to reboot Robin Hood as I could be a backup singer for Beyonce. Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Does whatever a spider can. Sony Studios funded Canadian television to turn a legend into a punchline where the only thing that was stolen was the audience's time. Don't waste my motherfucking time! If you're enjoying this breakdown of Hollywood and you want to see more of unmasking of what's going on in Tinseltown, join me every Sunday for Slayer Nation Live. Yes, that's right. I have started streaming every Sunday at 2 p.m. Central and 8 p.m. UK time. We're going to have a lot of great conversations with a lot of amazing guests. So I'll see you there. Coming in at number six, Lizzo. Feeling fussy, walking in my Balenciennes, trying to... The musician fought all the way through 2023 to be the year's mascot for choosing your own reality. I'm not really trying to change culture. I feel like I am culture. Woke is merely another four-letter word for control that makes losers feel like winners. Well, Lizzo took it to heart. She planted a flag for body positivity, and the media carried her message around the world like it was the last triple cheeseburger on the planet. Seriously, I'm not here to make fat jokes or to make fun of her music, but I want to question what's the point of fat liberation? Well, if you believe the musician, she's going to say so everybody, regardless of how they look, how big or small, can love themselves and feel beautiful. If that were true, it'd be fantastic. 
But I think fat liberation or body positivity, as they call it, is just another deceptive term for control. One to make strong, healthy, independent, free people unhealthy and sick. I feel like a sore thumb, but it's a beautiful sore thumb. And I'm just honored to be a part of the music industry right now where all these sore thumbs are poking out and being themselves. What truly pisses me off is the lie. Lizzo can go around promoting her airbrushed image on magazine covers like Vogue and Rolling Stone. Yet not once has she had a serious discussion about the cold, hard facts of living a morbidly obese lifestyle. Obesity is a serious problem. I should know. I've been fat half my life. One year I go up the scale and one year I go down. But I never, ever stop fighting to be healthy and fit. We think and we pretty and we know what we doubt. It's the battle of the big girls. The good news, Lizzo's reached the end of the buffet and she's pissed. That's because she thought her personal crusade to get everybody to love themselves was a members only exclusive club. Fat people are still getting the short end of this movement. We're still getting on, we're still getting talked about, memed, shamed, and no one cares anymore. Now look, I know you're not supposed to make fun of fat people. I understand, all right? I don't know why though. What the fuck are you giving me shit for? All right, you put the cookies in there. I didn't. How is this my problem? The musician is merely another broken toy in the Hollywood machine trying to break the world in order to feel normal. Coming in at number five, we got HBO Max's Velma. See, now if this was a show, it'd be super hot if you two kissed. Mindy Kaling's Scooby-Doo prequel is only memorable because it left a bad taste in your mouth. You know, initially I was excited. I'm like, finally, someone's going to do it. HBO Max is going to continue the 50-year Hanna-Barbera tradition. But no, that's not what we got. Instead, the studio decided to take all our childhood memories, shove them into a sandwich, and then punch it till it fell apart. What they gave us was Mindy Kaling's therapy sessions for big girl daddy issues, which turned out to be nothing but a CW show. Then they tossed in underage nudity, cockroaches having sex, identity politics again, race swapping, a wretched script, and Mindy's love affair with herself, all squeezed in between mean girl lectures that come after every public service announcement for the pronoun police. Uh, a couple things. First, I think this place has changed since the last time we were here. Believe it or not, HBO and Max renewed the series for season two, even though nobody watched it. Rotten Tomatoes audience score gave it a seven. And the critics, these are talking about the Hollywood Hive red carpet cult critics, gave it a 39. Seriously, Velma is trash. A Scooby-Doo prequel made at HBO Max by people who hate Scooby-Doo. All we wanted was the return of a classic, fun-loving cartoon, not a woke vendetta. Coming in at number four, censoring classic books. Thank you, mister. The name's Bond. James Bond. Bond. James Bond. Yeah, that was his name. Now it's Woke. James Woke. Ian Fleming's James Bond books join Roald Dahl's collection in being sanitized for sensitive souls. It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal. Hollywood's cultural colonoscopy continues to try to turn the next generation into fragile porcelain dolls. So the minute that life challenges them with a word they don't like, they'll shatter into a million pieces. The spy thrillers from 1953's Casino Royale to 1966's Octopussy and the Living Daylights will be re-released in April to coincide with the 70th anniversary celebrations this spring, after Ian Fleming Publications Limited commissioned a review by sensitivity readers. The very notion of sensitivity readers should make your skin crawl. The thought of walking past a, a Waterstones with three little N-words is completely unacceptable to us now and has been changed and adapted. And I can't see why we can't do the same for Bond. Haters see hate everywhere. The reality is James Bond was cool. A martini sipping lady charmer, bad guy smashing icon of masculinity. His only biggest threat before was Blofeld who liked to stroke a pussycat. Today, it's a virtue signaling mob that scrubbed 007 like a dirty window. A scene in a strip club has been changed from Bond could hear the audience panting and grunting like pigs at the trough. He felt his own hands gripping the tablecloth. His mouth was dry to Bond could sense the electric tension in the room. <laughs> really? 
The whole point of a book is to be descriptive so readers can paint a picture in their minds with your words, with their words. I'm not even offended by the use of language that is racist in the books because that is what was written by the author and that was how society was at the time, a stark reminder as to how far we've come. This is worse than book burning because it's more than about controlling people, it's about reprogramming them. How many fingers am I holding up, this? And if the party says there are not four, but five, then how many? Five. Hollywood wants to turn the world into New Salem, where bullies hold purity trials for imaginary witches and bad words. My daughter! Don't just stand there, do something! Help. Police. Murder. The author, Roald Dahl, was also on the chopping block last year from the thought police who wanted to take a meat cleaver to his life's work. The Oompa Loompas in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory were described by Dahl as small men, but now they're simply small people, just in case any of the small men wanted to become small women or small non-binaries. This country is going straight to hell. You know, when I was a kid, we actually had to deal with stuff. It's how we learned, whether it was from books or movies or good or bad experiences, they each had a lesson to impart. But today's publishing houses, whether controlled by Hollywood directly or merely influenced, want to slap a trigger warning on every critical thinker and erase everyone's imagination, which is basically like draining every rainbow around the world of its color till life is nothing but dull and gray. This is why we fight. Coming in at number three, Welcome to the American Society of Magical Negroes. Focus Feature Studios released the trailer for their upcoming film two weeks before Christmas. And my only take on it was, it looks like part segregationist rally and part infomercial for Miss Cleo. You really don't know what to do first. Do you walk out, do you shout, or do you schedule your first tarot reading? The name needs a little updating, maybe like magical black people. The good news, the people have spoken. The movie is already a certified dud for 2024. It has failed even before it ever gets out of the gate. The trailer on YouTube has 6.4 million views, 7,000 likes, and about 100,000 dislikes. That tells you everything you need to know. So we're not going to break the trailer down. I'm just going to share with you its plot. What's the most dangerous animal on the planet? Sure. White people. Comedies used to be about making you feel happy to be alive. That's not what Focus Features wanted. They wanted to be able to fuel hate by lighting a match that sparked division. Boy, were they wrong. Instead, they ended up building a bonfire for everyone to rally around. The one truly good thing I liked about this upcoming film, about the trailer, was the comment section for it. It brought black and white together in one unanimous voice to say no. Coming in at number two. Rachel Zegler, she's Hollywood's very own box office black cat. Nothing but a bad attitude wrapped in a big mouth. The original cartoon came out in 1937, yeah. and very evidently so. Hi ho! And she's not gonna be dreaming about true love. Oh! Hello. She's that is not gonna be yeah. saved by the prince. She's not gonna be saved by the prince. Weird, weird. She's dreaming about becoming the leader she knows she can be. Her first three films have already failed, whether you're talking about West Side Story, Shazam, Fury of the Gods, or Hunger Games, The Ballad of Bad Writing and Boredom. It can barely break even. Yet in Tinseltown tradition, she failed upwards. Her reward was for Disney to cast her as Snow White in their new live action remake. Get this, so as Snow White, from an actress that actually hates Snow White. So when we came to reimagining the actual role of Snow White, it became about the fairest of them all, meaning who is the most just and who uh, can become a fantastic leader. Seriously, Rachel Ziegler is nothing more than the newer model of Meghan Markle. Just two look at me leeches. One married a prince and turned him into a frog in order to secure Hollywood headlines. The other thinks princes are stalkers. The, the original cartoon came out in 1937. There is a big focus on her love story um, with a guy who literally stalks her. Once more, I have but one song. Weird, weird. It's really not about the love story at all, which is really, really wonderful. It's Hollywood, baby. The only real difference between the two wannabes is one is making movies with blockbuster budgets that bomb, and the other one is trashing family in order to try to transform hate into hard cash. 
concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. The reality is Rachel Ziegler didn't just offer the public a poison apple with her creepy take on Snow White as this empowered feminist ruler that hates true love and men. She built a whole orchard in everyone's backyard. As a result, the mouse house went into panic mode. They tried to polish up her image so everybody wouldn't view her as an evil queen and just regard her as a misunderstood princess. Choosing thankfulness and yes. gratefulness is choosing peace. Let me tell you something. Soy una Latina orgullosa. Tengo muchos privilegios. I truly believe in the universe and putting good out and getting good back in and just sharing the love. Zegler's grievance gospel tour has failed. It only ended up reminding everybody why they didn't like her. The backlash has been so enormous that French production company Studio Canal replaced her in their upcoming film, Paddington 3. Replace. That's the Hollywood Hive's PC way of saying fired. The good news, Zegler's 15 minutes are up. The only time we should ever see her again after Snow White's debut in 2025 is the next time you're at a McDonald's and she's behind the counter asking if you want fries to go with that Coke. Weird. 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 It's Hollywood, baby. Now, our grand champion coming in at number one, Disney. You know, Walt Disney once said, all our dreams can come true if we but have the courage to believe them. Those are powerful, beautiful words. Well, that's from a long time ago because then came the dark days. And 2023 saw the tragic kingdom say, dreams, forget dreams. We have quotas to fill. We jumped up and down. We celebrated that. Nobody stopped us. And, and it felt great. In part, I, I think nobody stopped us because we were, um, you know, we were targeting Gen Z and, and millennials. And, and now we know, you know, as my son texted me this morning, <laughs> you know, Gen Z is 30 to 40 percent queer than the other generation's mom. So Disney better get with it. Everybody knows you never go full retard. You know, Gen Z is 30 to 40 percent queer than the other generation's mom, so Disney better get with it. You went full retard, man. Never go full retard. Instead of great stories with iconic characters, mysterious worlds with rich mythology, and beautiful animation that reminds us to smile like we were kids again, we got the likes of Lucasfilm boss Kathleen Kennedy. She led the charge for years, working with CEOs Bob Iger, then Bob Chapik, and the MCU's Kevin Feige, all together embraced ideology instead of art. And they laid out a roadmap that would transition eventually Mickey into Minnie. The fact that the company was bought by the Walt Disney Company has been amazing because they very much support the fact that we are trying to grow uh, in the workforce, the number of women in executive positions. But we have 50% of our, our executive team are women. Mm -hmm. And six out of eight of the people in my story group are women. And the majority of the people involved in the development of those stories are women. We are going to hire a woman who's going to direct a Star Wars movie, I have no doubt. Kathleen Kennedy never once focused on telling great stories. Her only concern was who was telling the story. I like to make men uncomfortable. I enjoy <laughs> making men uncomfortable. Welcome to the gender wars. Star Wars is officially dead. But it wasn't Disney's only failure in 2023. We saw everything from The Little Mermaid, which required consent for a kiss, to Peter Pan, which kneecapped the Lost Boys just to score diversity points, to the Marvel's $300 million box office bomb, led by a director that actually hates Captain America. All the way to Ahsoka, Echo, and the 100-year celebration for animation movie Wish, all capped off with Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. That wasn't so much a nice send-off for Harrison Ford's legendary character as much as it pulled his pants down and shamed him in front of the world. These didn't make blockbuster headlines that Disney could be proud of. These films served as tombstones for the tragic kingdom. We're not going to make everybody happy all the time, and we're not going to try to. And we're certainly not going to lessen our core values. In which I pledge to be a better ally for the LGBTQ plus community, our core values wherever i could just basically adding queerness to our core values bob Iger rubber stamped disney's social experiment he signed off on every bad idea and gave his seal of approval on every bad script coming out of a committee of box wine drinking beta males till it pushed disney to the brink and their stock hit a 10-year low is that creators lost sight of what their number one objective needed to be that 
entertain, and if you can infuse it with positive messages and have a good impact on the world. Bobby Boy's change of heart came a little bit too late. He only decided to do so after he realized that the public started to wake up and walk out. Yet, yeah, that wasn't his biggest mistake. That came with his new strategy to silence the public square. He wanted to boycott Twitter, which is now known as X, in order to stop people from mocking the mouse house. That's his biggest mistake. Because there he made a new enemy, one with a kingdom even bigger than his. Don't advertise. You don't want them to advertise? No. What do you mean? If, if somebody's going to try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> is that clear? I hope it is. Hey, Bob. In today's Tinseltown, woke oftentimes is less about politics than camouflage for talentless hacks. Yet between those who actually embrace the ideology of free will and those who are more like go-along, get-along Johns trying to keep their heads low and save their jobs, the goals remain the same. It's very much like the Matrix movie. But instead of transforming human beings into batteries, the Hollywood hive wants to transform critical thinkers into cows. Don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next product. If you enjoyed the video and found value in it, hit the subscribe button. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below of where you think Hollywood's going. What do you think of their woke disasters from 2023? And share with everyone you know. And to win every battle and stay true to yourself, all you have to remember is we never bow down, we never bend the knee. Always forward. Good day, sir!